Welcome to another episode of Follow the Brand. I am your host, Grant McGaw, CEO of Five Star BDM, a five star personal branding and business development company. I want to take you on a journey that takes another deep dive into the world of personal branding and business development using compelling personal story, business conversations, and tips to improve your personal brand. By listening to the Follow the Brand podcast series, you will be able to differentiate yourself from the competition and allow you to build trust with prospective clients and employers. You never get a second chance to make a first impression. Make it one that will set you apart, build trust, and reflect who you are. Developing your five-star personal brand is a great way to demonstrate your skills and knowledge. If you have any questions for me or my guests, please email me at grant.magaw, spelled M-C-G-A-U-G-H, at 5 Star BDM, B for brand, D for development, M for masters.com. Now let's begin with our next five-star episode on Follow the Brand. Welcome to the Follow Brand Podcast. I am your host, Grant McGall, CEO of Five Star BDM, where we help you to build a five-star brand that people will follow. In today's episode, we are venturing into the dynamic part of healthcare leadership, illuminated by the exceptional Kenneth Jones, CEO of HCA for Northwest Hospital. Kenneth's narrative begins in Atlanta, where his grandmother's devoted career in nursing ignited his passion. Kenneth is a beacon of innovative leadership, blending profound clinical insights with strategic business wisdom. Our conversation welves into the core leadership skills that are vital yet often overlooked, masterful relationship building, the craft of clear communication, and the strategic orchestration of team talents to enhance healthcare delivery. Peering into the future, Kenneth highlights the revolutionary impact of technology in healthcare, showcasing its capacity to significantly uplift patient care within the HCA network. Additionally, he extends a special invitation to our listeners to participate in the NAHSE National Conference in 2024, a pivotal gathering for healthcare professionals eager to network and immerse themselves in cutting edge healthcare leadership and innovation that will be aired in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. This episode charts Kenneth's remarkable journey and serves as a fountain of invaluable lessons applicable across various sectors. For more stimulating discussions on personal branding, business and career development, financial empowerment, technology innovation, and executive presence, follow us at 5starbdm.com. Thank you for tuning in to the Follow Brand, where we are building a five-star brand that you can follow. Welcome, everybody, to the Follow Brand Podcast. We're going to keep it right here local, right here in Broward County, we're going to talk to a healthcare executive that I, I admire. First of all, I admire him because he went to FAMU. I mean, anybody that goes to FAMU already gets a leg up on my podcast. I have to talk to them. I've been after Kenneth Jones for a while. I said, Ken, you see what I'm doing. You see the kind of people that are on the show. You have got to come and share some of your knowledge, some of your wisdom, some of your insights and what you're doing. Please introduce yourself. Hey, Grant. Thanks for, thanks for having me. Um, great introduction. Yeah, you're right. Fam, you, you can't go wrong with the Rattlers. And so, um, you know, it's uh, definitely a part of my story, a part of my, um, you know, upbringing. Um, you know, my heart is, is definitely bleeds um, orange and green. And so I graduated from Florida a m in 2000 and remained very connected with the, with the organization. Um, as you mentioned, I've been here, been here in Broward County as the CEO of HCA Florida Northwest Hospital since, since March of 2021, and really have had a very, you know, exciting journey along the way um, from from my days at 
um, University of Minnesota after I graduated from FAMU to my, my fellowship at Duke and really, you know, exciting leadership journey. Really look, looking forward to sharing that with the broader community. Well, let's talk about that, man. You just you just went around the country with us, right? You know, after Minnesota and Florida, I think you had a couple of stints in the Illinois, some hospital systems. Let's talk about the Kenneth Jones story. You told me earlier, you're from Atlanta, Georgia. What were you doing in Atlanta that led you on this path to help you? You know, my um, one of my early inspirations was my was my grandmother. She was a nurse uh, by training, and early in my in my life, I had the opportunity to have exposure to the healthcare system, really more as a, a patient advocate, just learning about her experiences and going in and out of hospitals. And she gave me the opportunity to be exposed um, to her cardiologist. I did my one of my first job was working in the cardiology. A practice. And I thought I was going to be going to the cath lab and hanging out with the with the with the physicians all day, and I was doing medical records filing. But it really gave me that that foundation to really understanding this is what um, healthcare is about. This is what um, physicians do, what nurses do, what, how offices run. Um, as I went to college, I, I really was not exposed to hospital management. Uh, up until my after I graduated, I had some colleagues that went to the university. Minnesota from um, from Florida A and M and and I felt like you know I always wanted to be in healthcare leadership. I, my, my ideal job growing up was to be a dean of a of the cardiology section at a large academic medical center. And so I always had an interest in business and, and did some investments and in, in college and, and and was always in leadership positions. And so really matching the clinical aspect, my grandmother's um, you know helping to, to kind of grow from, a, from, from her perspective and, and the business side of things, bringing those together um, and healthcare leadership was kind of a match made in heaven for me. Man, this is, so this is the beginning of a great story. I see it already. You know, your grandmother gives you that, that leg up, like point you in the right direction. I like your, your, your passion around cardiovascular. I mean, that's heart. You know, we're talking about the heart, you know, so let's talk about the heart just a little bit around leadership philosophy. How did that guide you? Now, when you think about what you're doing today, you are the CEO of, of the hospital system there. I think, is that located in Margate? Is that the location? Correct. Yeah, we're located in Margate. Um, and actually, this is our 40th year um, in existence. So this is our big birthday. Um, if we started, we were founded here in 1984 um, and, and located in, in, a, in a growing part of the, the northern Broward community. Wow, man. See, that's what I'm talking about. We want to make sure everyone understands the services that are available. So, so important. Talk to me just a little bit about your leadership philosophy. Yeah, you know, at the end of the day, um, leadership has to come from the heart. It has to come from those that really have a passion and a, and a connection back to to their why. And oftentimes, as I do orientations or interview um, staff, I ask them, what is your connection? You ask me about, about my why and how I got interested because that really breathes the passion and breathes the energy that, 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 that can help to foster great leadership. Um, and so once you have, a, have identified why, the, the why behind our leaders, it's really our responsibility to create the structure um, and the purpose to be able to create the results, which really ties back to outcomes for our patients. And so at, at the end of the day, I look for passion. I look for energy. I look for um, an interest. Um, we can teach the skill set related to the, the operations elements, the you know negotiation skills, all the fundamentals. But at the core of what we do from a culture standpoint, um, it, it begins and ends with the heart. It begins and ends with the passion and connection back to the purpose. And sometimes like, you see leaders who are in their various journeys where they may um, be um, burn out in one particular role. Um, it's really our responsibility as leaders to connect it back to their purpose, to be able to um, help them fulfill the ultimate mission, which is truly improving the care for those that are vulnerable, improving the care for those that don't have a voice, um, and creating the results to uh, to generate, you know, overall improvements in overall healthcare status. That's so so important because what you do day in and day out, you're affecting lives. You are affecting lives and people are their, at their most vulnerable. And when, you look at, when I look at a hospital system and I see it, I have a lot of respect because you're dealing with some things that I don't know how you get prepared for. You go to school, yes, you get some theoretical knowledge, yes, you go to business school, you understand the finance, 
But when it comes to like something gets thrown at you, like like COVID nineteen, where it's just that just envelopes the entire hospital, or you start to have any other kind of breakout or crisis management, did your schooling help you with crisis management, or that was some OJT that you had to learn yourself? I think during the the very challenging same time, you, you you relate back to your personal experiences, whether it be how you were raised or personal challenges that you had growing up, or I was in the band growing up. And so a lot of my frame of reference around the team, around uh, the organization was around my band experiences and dealing with things like failure or dealing with things like you have a trip that's being interrupted based on a natural disaster or, or a circumstance that really uh, is out of your control. And that's really what leadership is about. You come to work um, and, and you don't know what you're going to necessarily experience based on things come to your doorstep that are new, um, that may not be um, something that you woke up thinking that this is going to happen. Um, I think really making sure that you have a solid team. At the end of the day, I think our team um, create, creates the, the environment and creates the capacity for us to be successful because I'm one person and we have over a thousand colleagues that work in this organization on a daily basis. And it's really um, dependent on the team and the individual folks who to work together um, and it's shaping the culture that sort of the teams really see themselves as being part of a cohesive system. Uh, so building the eyes and ears that are out and about 24-7 when we're sleeping or we're not here, we're on vacation, we're doing, dealing with other things. How do we really create the eyes and ears to be able to leverage and, and to create the environment that we're all looking for and we want as a patient? I like that, man. I, what I'm hearing from you is culture. You you create the culture. You, you manage through experience and a tie people through you know the heart, the head, the, the work, that has to be done and the, the greater importance and you've adapted to all these industry changes. There's a lot of industry changes in healthcare. You've got people that are retiring. You've got people that uh, have other options. They're like, hey, you know what? Healthcare is not always in the hospital now. Sometimes it's in other areas outside of the traditional path. How are you adapting to all these changes in healthcare? Yeah, I think it's going back to the core. You know, if you think about um, who we are, we are people to care of people. And if you look at healthcare, you know, 200 years ago, it was um, a, a or 100 years ago, it was a doctor going to uh, making house calls and, and, you know, touching the patient and making sure that they feel comforted and empathetic um, and creating that experience and creating that environment that they can be healed. You know, oftentimes where we fail our patients is when we are, we don't focus on the things that are empathetic. And so whether it's a telemedicine visit or whether it is um, an in-person visit or something in between, um, healthcare is about creating those compassionate experiences. And so personal connections tremendously matter. And when I go out and around and spend a lot of time in the field, um, I ask our staff, not question necessarily about the condition the patient's in the hospital for, um, but I ask about their story. I ask about their journey. I ask about their career, their family, because that's really what connects our patients back um, to and our staff back to a common purpose. And so, um, you know, healthcare will continue to change. It's, it's, it's delivered differently than what it was um, 100 years ago. But one common thread is um, having people take care of people. And it's really our responsibility to create that environment where our staff feel like they um, have the most potential to take care of others. I love that. That's what it's about. People taking care of people. That's the end of the day. That's exactly what it is. Now, you've got a number of different services that you're rolling out there at your facility, some programs that you've got that I think are going to be impactful. Share with the audience what's going on. Yeah, you know, we've been very focused on growth um, and, and really the growth was, revolves around what our community needs. And one service that we're very proud about is our graduate medical education programs. We're, we're actually the largest HCA is the largest producer of residents across the United States. Here in, um, in, in Broward County, uh, our consortium is with uh, HCA Westside Hospital, um, over 150 um, residents are, are trained um, daily here at Northwest and in Westside um, for future 
opportunities in our community. And so not only are we a community, growing community hospital, but we're in a growing academic community hospital and in various service lines like medicine, surgery, pathology, anesthesia, um, OBGYN, um, and, and looking to do fellowships in, in other areas like gastroenterology, cardiology, pulmonary, medical oncology. And so we, we want to not only deliver healthcare services, but we also want to train the next generation of physicians, um, as well as our nursing staff. We have a, uh, we own Galen School of Nursing, uh, which is a large nursing school across the United States. And so we strongly believe that uh, we have to develop the talent pipeline um, in our various markets and our various campuses. Um, not only does this help us recruit for future talent, it helps us bring out the best, because um, these residents and nursing interns participate in our clinical committees, they participate in our, in our quality committees, and help to really elevate the overall care in the organization. Um, as far as service lines goes, one of our core service lines is our women's service line, um, a large um, the provider of, of um, obstetric and gynecology care, high-risk um, NICU, maternal fetal medicine that ties back to our OBGYN residency services. And as other um, hospitals may consider um, to not have women's services. We're a big believer in, in women's health care and making sure that our moms have access to health care local to their home and local to, um, to their communities in which, in which they live. You know, we have OB hospitalists that are in-house 24-7. But if a, if a mom comes in with a highly complex case, they're able to be taken care of by you know, an OB-GYN that's, that's really dedicated to their overall care in-house um, maternal fetal medicine physicians that are able to handle high risk patient populations, and of course, our residents, which are here. Um, this is our second year of our residency program, so we have two more years to grow. We have four residents per year, and so that core service line is a, is a big part of who we are um, based on the population needs. And we're really, really well situated in an area where there's a tremendous amount of demand for those services. I love that. I love that. I love the fact that you're growing and that you're meeting the demand and you're meeting the community where they are and allowing them to have an open door to be a part of your family, to be a part of your culture. Absolutely. So um, yeah, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, I was going to ask you this, because it's important to me. And because at, at, at your level, what you're doing and what you're leveraging, you have to work with business operations. You've got to work with finance, you've got to work with also uh, physician relationship, clinical uh, uh, applications, and, and all the other things, that are all the facets that a CEO has to deal with within an institution. Of all those things, the things that you've learned, especially if you are talking to someone that's coming out of their program and getting on our prem, what's the leveraging the most that's helped you the most? Is it your financial uh, knowledge, your business acumen, your, your clinical experience, what would you say has helped you the most? Yeah, I think that, uh, that at the end of the day, having um, an ability to, um, to connect with others and to create relationships and to identify opportunities and to build trust. You know, we, um, hospitals have um, various components that may be um, similar or different based on which facility you're in. But what's, what's, what can be different is just the culture in that organization and how can a leader really um, create connectivity to their teams to be able to identify opportunities so that everyone's kind of rolling in the same direction. And so I spend quite a bit of my time really trying to get to know our frontline staff, walking through the halls, creating that relationship. Because, you know, sometimes when the CEO comes and starts asking questions, our staff may feel less compelled to communicate what some of the barriers are. But I want our teams to really uh, communicate what their challenges are. Because I, I think that my responsibility is to make sure we're removing barriers and helping to, to allow our teams to grow and our frontline colleagues to do their job. And so I think that's one of the things that, um, I'm, you know, really try to focus on is creating an environment through a relationship so that we can move to more of the complex challenges that may be more difficult to, to, to actually fit. Ready to elevate your brand with Five Star Impact? Welcome to the Final Brand Podcast, your gateway to exceptional personal growth and innovative business strategies. Join me as I unveil the insider strategies of industry pioneers and branding experts. 
Discover how to supercharge your business development, harness the power of AI for growth, and sculpt a personal brand that stands out in the crowd. Transform ambition into achievement. Explore more at firestarbdm.com for a wealth of resources. Ignite your journey with our brave brand blueprint and begin crafting your standout five-star feature today. Man, that, I love it. It's, it's the people skills, man. You cannot get around that. Like, the people skills, building relationships and acquiring trust. Tr- people have to trust you. They have to like you. You, you want them to trust, like and be able to work with you on a real authentic basis. So they're not talking to, let's say, the CEO. They're talking to Kenneth Joe, the human right. being. And we understand this is the, 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 the mission that we're on. Here's the playbook. I'm given the playbook. Let's look at this playbook. Can we accomplish the mission with the play that we have? And if That's you right. need to call an article, I need to be comfortable with being like, hey, I hear what you're saying. I see your angle, but let's look at it from this aspect. I love the collaborative approach because this is a top business. When you're on the other side of the ball, meaning the patient, you know, first you're you know, part of the community, you're doing your thing, and all of a sudden you become a patient. They've got to trust that you have the playbook to get them to the other side, which is to be healthy, to be well, to be back with their family. You take that very, very seriously. Help us understand when you're talking to your to your staff, how do you get that buy-in, you know, when they're at their lowest point, when things aren't going the way they expect it? I think transparency is tremendously important. Um, folks need to know where 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 they stand and and, and where we want to go. A vision is tremendously important. Um, there's nothing worse than uh, an organization that may be um, not understanding of what their starting point is and have no clue where they're going. And so I think really probing, asking those probing questions around the history, because history will kind of shape and provide some context. Uh, but education, I spend, um, as, as a part of the leader, you know, the coaching element, it's just like you mentioned uh, the various audibles. You know, sometimes the receivers or, or running backs may not necessarily know that they're breaking the route too time, you know, not timely enough, or, or they don't necessarily know all the, the nuances. And so uh, part of the responsibility of the coach is to coach and provide feedback and provide insight to give examples. And I've worked in various markets that have different experiences that may be helpful and provide context versus someone that may have only been in one location and, and not have the context about how other places have done things. It's not to say we're all we're going to be like that organization. It's just to provide feedback, inspiration, a hope, um, a plan for the future so that, you know, folks can kind of consider at least our high performers and our solid performers can kind of consider what the opportunity looks like. And, and I think talent development um, is, a, is a key component of, of what we do. And so as you have these conversations, you can identify where are our staff as far as their performance. And, and if they're a low performer, I'm um, having a, a, you know, an opportunity to really help develop them. But ultimately, if they're not a good fit for the organization, um, they have to be managed out as well. And so those may be tough conversations, but it's ultimately our responsibility to make sure that we have the right um, talent in the organization that's connected and understands um, and, and helping them in, in, in a personal level along their journey. Awesome. That, this, this is the things we need to hear. We're both part of the NAHSE, especially down here in Florida. And the, the National Conference is going to be here in Fort Lauderdale in October. And we, we, you know, we, we've got to roll out the carpet for it, right? We're going to roll Absolutely. out the carpet for our people. This is a national organization that helps to promote Black healthcare executives. I want you, let's have a conversation. If I were a member of NAHSE, I've got my, my, my diploma, I've got my MHSA, I want to now become a part of the HCA family. Help me understand what is the best path forward for, for my situation? You know, one of the, the values in, in our in our company is the diversity of opportunities that we offer. Um, of course, our core is hospitals, but we have opportunities in the medical um, 
in a medical space as far as clinic, you know, medical practices, clinical practices, et cetera, for physician offices. We're one of the larger um, operators of urgent cares. We have an ambulatory surgery center space um, on the, you know, and, and just like any other large system, you know, opportunities in information technology or, you know, clinical informatics or business development, um, performance improvement, um, et cetera. And so I think it's just identify early on where you see your, your, your passion. Some folks may be more interested in marketing, while others may be more interested in going out and identifying new business sources. Others may be more interested in, on the IT side, or some, some may want to be in operations. And so um, I, when I talk to prospective um, colleagues, I, I try to probe on kind of what, where is your passion? Because your passion will, will help you identify what the best role for, for you is. And, and then as a leader, I can help connect them um, to, to where those opportunities are. You know, we're a, we're a large footprint here in South Florida. We have 14 facilities, 14 hospitals. We have um, 49 hospitals throughout the state. It's a very large presence in Florida. So ge- geography also matters. You know, where do you want to live? Where do you see yourself wanting to 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 grow your career? And, and does that connect back to where those opportunities are? And so um, just trying to identify what that looks like. Is it finance? Is it, you know, a, a physician that wants to be a chief medical officer and just helping them connect to those various uh, roles, those various opportunities? I'm, I'm curious now. That, that's good. I like that. Because I have a technology I am information technology. Now we're getting into intelligent technology with artificial intelligence. From your lens and how you're operating as the chief executive officer at your ACA facility, how do you view technology? How, do you use it as an enabler? Is it determined? Is it something better? Is it something more? I mean, what is your viewpoint? You know, I think um, where from a technology standpoint, you know, it won't solve our problems independently. Um, You have to have people that are able to take care of people, like I mentioned previously. But I think it can be an enabler to reduction in unnecessary, um, you know, steps to various processes. How how do we create more value? The goal is creating more value so that our, um, our patients get the results and they get the outcomes that they need more, um, you know, more successfully. And so whether it's artificial intelligence that's helping to um, pull things together more rapidly, which is kind of like the, the virtual human calculator that's able to pull all these various sources together and to drive an outcome and to do things that our brains physically can't do. Um, or it could be, you know, information systems to better understand our patient needs. Um, I think it, it allows humans to, to, create um, information more rapidly, but it, it comes, it can't come at a cost. You know, sometimes folks feel like this can, is something that you can just sit at your desk and just look at reports all day based on um, insights. You have to balance the, the feedback that you're getting from the technology standpoint with um, talking to people and the, the human element and the human touch to be able to draw the best conclusion. I like that answer. Never take the human factor out of the equation, especially when we're talking technology. It's a big thing on the table now because AI is a game changer uh, as far as what it's used. But it's just like anything else, whether it was mobile computing, whether it was social media, whether it was cloud computing, all these things are great tools. It enables us to do a lot of things, but without the human factor, it, it's kind of, it has no value. So it has to always create value. That's the thing I love to do anytime I'm looking at a technology problem or just a problem in general, uh, how can it be solved? I tell people all the time what technology is really, really good at and kind of allude to it. It's very, very good at what I call collapsing the windows of time, making things quicker, faster, better. And it's also very, very good when it comes to communication. If you need to communicate more precisely or you need to communicate things in different media, it's very, very good. It's ne- I don't think it's meant to replace the human to human interaction, but if you have the human to IT to human, it can make it better. And if it's not doing that, and I go back to a lot of people had EMR experience, like, man, this is horrible. I now had to code. I had to like, wow, you're sucking up all my time because I got to now put all this thing, all this information as data back into the system. And it's just taking a lot of my time. We're changing that environment. I'm sure you, you lived through that. Back 
couple of years back, right? Yeah, you see the evolution of things that were meant to be helpful and did not provide the value. So we learn from these experiences. We learn from we can learn from other industries. Uh, but to your point, it, it still it still has to be um, you know the, the human element to to be able to prioritize and be able to keep the, the tools relevant. So before I leave you, we're getting to the end. I want you to be able to talk directly to my audience. We have an audience of about 20,000 different health professionals uh, throughout the, the, the nation. A lot of them are part of the HCA family. And there's a lot of people that are, that are students that are they're looking into the healthcare industry. It's like, what, what's happening now? From your lens, what if keywords or or phrases or inspiration would you like to leave us with? You know, I think, um, you know, for folks who are interested in having um, a bright future as far as leadership, um, you know, being able to to grow in their careers, you know, it's my, my career has been has been um, a, a very positive growth journey and all the jobs have been very different and it's a very dynamic um, field. And so, and I, I feel like I can really make a difference you know, in my capacity, and and I've always felt like I've been able to make a difference, whether I was a an administrator, a fellow, or manager, director, VP, or CEO. And so, I would encourage those um, individuals who want to make a difference in, in the in the human elements of of life and and in clinical care and. And healthcare remains to be a significant part of our economy, and so there will always be jobs, which is something that I was always interested in. I want to be gainfully employed and be able to to be successful from a leadership standpoint. And so, um, I think having folks who are passionate, um, folks who are interested in, in in growth and personally, professionally, new ideas, but also coming in to to various. Um, challenges. You know, this is not easy work. And so if you want to be mentally challenged, critically challenged as far as critical thinking, as far as, you know, pushing yourself to the limit, um, this is a great career and a great um, opportunity to to really expand your horizon um, and, to, and to really, you know, lead in a different type of way. And sometimes our, our um, students um, pick other fields outside of healthcare. I think, um, you know, this has been a great career for me and it will be a great career for others as well. Wow, I can't say that better. Look at that. So this is wonderful. I want you to tell us again, because you are one of 49 hospitals, I think, for HCA yes. down here. Tell us what is the number one facility for HCA here in Florida, and what's the best way to reach you on LinkedIn? Um, HCA Northwest, um, HCA Florida Northwest Hospital is, our, is is number one, of course. Our um, our culture is is um, the culture that attracts um, our, our patients, our physicians, and our colleagues. And that's really what it comes down to. And you can find me on LinkedIn. Um, I'm active in, in LinkedIn. It's, you know, Kenneth Jones, you know, under CEO of ACA, uh, Florida Northwest Hospital. And so I encourage anyone to, to connect. Um, I would love to continue to share my leadership journey. If, if folks have any questions or follow-ups, they can, they can connect with me on LinkedIn. I certainly and like our conference. Conference. And we look forward to, to bringing the, the world to South to South Florida for our educational conference. It'll be a great experience. Look forward to hosting um, hosting those who are interested in, in that experience as well. Oh, it's gonna be wonderful. That'll be the second week of October. So mark your calendars early for those that are local. Wow, you gotta come out and be over at the Marriott. Harbor Beach Resort is going to be beautiful. We're really looking forward to it. This has been wonderful. I'm going to encourage the entire HCA family and all of you continue to tune in to follow brand, to tune in at Five Star Media. That is B for brand, E for development, and for masters.com. Jenna, this has been wonderful. Thank you for joining me on Thank the show. You. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Thanks for joining us on the Follow Brand Podcast. Big thanks to Full Effect Productions for their incredible support on each and every episode. Now the journey continues on our YouTube channel, Follow Brand TV series. Dive into exclusive interviews, extended content, and bonus insights that will fuel your success. Subscribe now and be a part of our growing community, sharing and learning together. Explore, engage, and elevate at Follow Brand TV series on YouTube. Stay connected, stay inspired. Till next time, we will continue building a five-star brand 
that you can follow.